Hi, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm very sorry because of some technical glitch. I couldn't uh, just uh, start with this. Just give me a minute. There's some technical error. So let us start with this simple question. Let us start with this simple question. Identify the lesion. Identify the lesion. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Okay. But before that, let me tell you about the offers which are going on so you can avail any of them. They are very important, they are very good and they are very, that's a deal of a lifetime. So let us, let us start with this. Okay. So in front of you, you see a lesion and this is the tongue and on the lower surface on or on the under surface of the tongue, you are seeing a lesion in front of you. So what is the answer? What is this structure? Yeah. Yes, you are right. You can see a ranula basically. So this is a ranula. When we talk about ranula, what are the characteristic features? It's a soft cystic along with that fluctuant. So soft cystic fluctuant swelling. And where is it located? So location, location is over the base of the tongue location is over the base of the tongue so what is this basically this is a mucus mucus extra vessation cyst it's a mucus extra vessation cyst so what is a ranula it's a basically a mucus extra vessation cyst what is the origin what is the origin of ranula? The origin of ranula is sublingual gland. So it's a sublingual, it's a swelling arising from the sublingual gland and it's a mucus extravasation cyst. Now, <coughs> one very important thing is what is a plunging ranula? What is a plunging ranula? So when we talk about plunging ranula, actually the word ranula here is a misnomer. It is not a ranula. Many a times people think that it's a ranula with cervical extension. It's not a ranula. So what is a plunging ranula students? Plunging ranula is a mucus retention cyst. So it's a mucus retention cyst arising from the arising from the what submandibular gland. So what happens why it is known as a plunging ranula because one side of that of one side of that swelling is towards the neck and one side is towards above the mylohyoid so it feels that this is a ranula which has extended down by a mylohyoid into the neck but actually it's a totally different origin so plunging ranula is a mucus retention cyst whereas ranula is a mucus extra vestation cyst so actually this was not getting connected my ipod was not getting connected and all of a sudden this was there so just to have a trial whether this is working or no i just discussed one question and i think it's all good to go <coughs> so we can now start with the topic of uh, c erectum basically this class is based on c erectum so i will start with this uh, topic of c erectum just give me a minute okay so now we'll start and revise everything about the c erectum now, C rectum is a very, very, very important topic. I was just having a trial whether I would be able to continue because I think there is some problem with my cable. So, students, again, apologies beforehand if my cable gets disrupted and the class, I couldn't, I cannot take the class. But yeah, I'll teach you C rectum now. So, I've done a trial with one small question and it's uh, it's working. So, C rectum, when we talk about the properties are same like C A colon. So, the type, if you talk about on the basis of pathology, on the basis of pathology, we have adeno-CA. It is adeno-CA. 
variety of types of adenosia we have. Now, in CA rectum also, there are two, three important things. What is the classical management of a patient of a CA rectum? It's very simple and straightforward. You need to understand whenever there is a cancer in the rectum, the first question is whether the natural route of defecation could be preserved or whether we will have to remove it. <coughs> so based upon these things, let us try to evolve a strategy of how we manage. Such a diagnosis, if you talk about diagnosis, the investigation of choice for CA rectum. What is the answer? What is the investigation of choice for CA rectum? The answer is, it is endoscopy. Endoscopic. And what is this endoscopic basically? This is colonoscopic guided biopsy. So colonoscopy guided biopsy. Why students colonoscopy is important? Colonoscopy is important. First of all, it will take you to the site from where you need to do the biopsy. The second thing is to have a knowledge about the synchronous or the metachronous tumors. There could be a possibility the thing that you are considering CA rectum is not actually a CA rectum. It's a CA colon with a synchronous or metachronous growth into the rectum. So you need to see whether actually it's a CA rectum or it's an extension of CA colon into the rectum or whether there are multiple discrete lesions throughout the colon. So it's very important. When you talk about the staging, the staging is also very, very, very important. For staging, we go for MRI. MRI with endorectal coil. So MRI with endorectal coil is what is better than EUS or you can say truss, better than truss, so transrectal ultrasound. <coughs> now you have to understand how we manage it. This is very 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 simple. When we talk about the management, the first thing is what T it is according to the TNM. So according to the TNM, what T it is. Now, this is very 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 simple thing. It could be either a patient of T1 or it could be T2 and above. So T1 or T2 and above. Now when you talk about T1, T2, T3 it's just it's the same like the CA colon. So if it is a lesion, if it is a lesion which is T1, you can directly go for surgery. Directly go for surgery. We'll see what are the options in surgery after 5 minutes. But when you talk about T2 and above, the next thing that you have to understand is you will have to go for NART, Neoadjuvant Radiotherapy. So what is this protocol? What is the aim of NART? The aim of NART is to downstage or downgrade the tumor. So to downstage or downgrade the tumor, we need to go for NART. Now this is an optional plus minus chemotherapy just like esophagus. Now when you are talking about neoadjuvant and neoadjuvant radiotherapy, what are the two regimens? So the next question is what are the two regimens that we have? Students here we have two regimens. The first regimen is a classic regimen. The classic regimen and what is the classic regimen? You are going to go for 60 grays. You are going to go <coughs> for 60 grays over 6 weeks. Over 6 weeks in weekly dose. So 60 grays over 6 weeks for the weekly dose. Yes, you can reduce. There are some literatures which say 45 grays to 60 grays. But yes, 60 grays is what is comfortably tolerated by the rectum. Now, what, we, what you need to do after this, you need to plan surgery. Now, the gap between this timing of radiotherapy and surgery is very important. So when is surgery planned? This is planned. It is planned six weeks, six weeks later to radiotherapy. But before, and this is very, very, very important, but before 12 weeks post radiotherapy. What do you mean by these two terms? Six weeks later, try to understand after, just after six weeks, the tissue is boggy and edematous and if you are going to <coughs> cut through it, edematous tissue, the surgery really becomes very, very, very difficult. Now, if you talk about, if you talk about after 12 weeks, the problem is that after 12 weeks, 
there is so much of fibrosis in this inflamed tissue that again the surgery becomes very difficult. Do you know when you are operating near the rectum, it looks easy but when you are doing and especially when you are doing a laparoscopic, it's okay. You have a magnified vision, you can reach there but when you are doing open, you have a very narrow tunnel vision and the space is all clustered and that is the time when you actually damage the hypogastric plexus or maybe there is some bleeding because of inadvertent, inadvertent you can say uh, damage to the presacral plexus. So this is very important to plan everything. The second regimen that you must be thinking of, what is that? It's a top up regimen. It's a short course. It's a short course and this short course regimen is also known as top up regimen. What is this top up regimen? 25 grays over 5 days. So 25 grays over 5 days and this is in divided doses divided doses so five grays a day and the best thing is immediately after this immediately after this surge after this radiation you can plan surgery so in this case the surgery can be planned immediately immediately after the radiotherapy so this is very 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 important for you people to understand that this is a short course which is more popular amongst the patients and the doctors. Now when you are talking about directly you are going for surgery, what are the things that we have? Remember even though we have some local resections possible but we don't do. Now when we talk about surgery, what surgery is a possibility? Let us try to understand this is also very 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 important. So when you talk about surgery, the next thing what surgery will be done? decide is decided by the distance the distance of growth the distance of growth from anal verge now why is this anal verge very important because the question here is only one thing sir post surgery will i be able to defecate by a natural route so you need to decide whether you are going for sphincter preserving surgery or sphincter sacrificing surgery so if the distance is more than 5 cm you are going to go for a sphincter preserving surgery sphincter preserving surgeries and if it is more than 5 it's fine if it is less than 5 cm then you will have to tell patient that you are going for sphincter sacrificing surgery so sphincter sacrificing versus sphincter preserving surgeries are the two options that you have here. Now when we are talking about sphincter sacrificing, what surgery shall you do? You are going to go for APR with permanent end colostomy. So what is the concept of APR with permanent end colostomy? Let us try to understand. What is that? That's abdominal perineal resection. Abdominal perineal resection. Why this is known as abdominal perineal resection? Because half of the surgery is completed by the abdominal root and half of the surgery is completed by the you can say by the rectal or by the perineal root. You can nowadays do an abdominal compartment, abdominal part, you can do it by laparoscopy also, and remaining the perineal part, yes, you will have to do an open uh, dissection around the anal orifice. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about the surgery very soon when we do it, uh, when, when I'll show you this. So when you talk about sphincter preserving surgery versus sphincter sacrificing, what are the options that we have in sphincter preserving surgeries? The first we have is AR. What do you mean by AR? Answer is anterior resection. The answer is anterior resection. The second is we have LAR. What is LAR? This is low anterior, low anterior resection. And the third, third that we have is ultra low AR. Ultra low AR. Now what is the concept of ULAR? Let us try to understand that with a diagram. What is ultra low AR? When will you call it an AR? When will you call it LAR? So let us try to understand all these things in terms of a diagram. Now when you talk about the anatomy of the rectum, 
so you have to understand something like this suppose this is what is anal words this is anal words so you need to understand that this line this is what is known as dentate line this is a dentate line so we have anal words we have dentate line <coughs> the next very important thing that we all have to understand is there is something which is known as sacrum and its promontory so sacral promontory so sacrum and its sacral promontory now try to understand there are few important things that we have to just 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 keep in mind that in front of the sacrum you have a plexus and what is this vascular plexus known as anyone what is this vascular plexus known as this is known as presacral plexus pre sacral plexus and this is very 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 important pre sacral plexus now the next thing is you all have to understand that around the sacrum you will have some fat also you will have some fat also uh, around the rectum and what is this known as this is known as the mesorectal fat so what is this fat known as this is known as mesorectal fat so this is meso rectum or mesorectal fat so we have the dentate line we have anal words lot of things we have studied and then when we talk about the peritoneal linings from the abdomen so we have a classical peritoneal lining which is known as endopelvic fascia so what is this this is endo pelvic endopelvic fascia now when the endopelvic fascia goes towards the you can say when the endopelvic fascia goes towards the rectum it gets bifurcated into two roots what are they one is going and covering the the sacrum and what is this fascia known as this is known as pre sacral fascia the pre sacral fascia is the posterior leaflet coming from the endopelvic fascia the next thing that you have to understand that one leaf will be going anterior now when you talk about the anterior this is going anterior and then it again splits into two one is going to cover the mesorectum and one of it is going to go on the anterior part of the rectum and do like this now what are you seeing in front of you bachche this this fascia this fascia that you get to see this is known as fascia propria rectum fascia propria rectum and the fascia that you are going to see here this is known as denon villers fascia do you know this denon villers fascia will again merge with the you can say fascia of the fascia of the <coughs> abdominal cavity and this is going to fall cause uh, create a what pouch of douglas so this is where the pouch of douglas is in females you will have a uterus and in males there will be a bladder so i am showing you anatomy of a male so there will be bladder and the peritoneal layer covering the bladder or the you can say uterus so utero uh, utero sacral basically that uh, that fold is down and then you have a utero vesical and utero so these folds are nothing but condensations of what endopelvic fascia students again try to understand you had something which is known as endopelvic fascia and from the endopelvic fascia you got two ribs or you can say two bifurcations one is known as the presacral fascia and the another one is going towards the rectum covering the posterior part that is mesorectum on the anterior and the posterior part on the posterior side this is known as fascia propria rectum on the anterior side this is known as denon villers fascia so these are very 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 important things and the next thing that you all have to see is this fascia propria rectum takes a u turn and inserts and mixes with the pre sacral fascia at the level of s4 you know s4 is very important and what is this what shall be the name of this fascia sir it is a fascia connecting the rectum to the sacral fascia that is a pre sacral fascia and that is what is known why it is known as recto sacral recto sacral fascia or this recto sacral fascia is more popularly known as what fascia students baldeer's fascia all these fascias are very 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 important because if you don't understand this baldeer's fascia 
you will not be able to understand anything what is the importance of importance of Waldeer's fascia what is the importance of Waldeer's fascia remember any surgery any surgery involving involving resection of the rectum above the Waldeer's Waldeer's fascia so any surgery mm -hmm, I think there's some problem okay any surgery involving the resection of rectum above the Waldeer's fascia yes <coughs> that is what is known as anterior resection so let me tell you so any surgery involving resection of rectum above above Waldeer's fascia this is what is known as anterior resection now what is the significance of this anterior resection yes this is done above the level of yes rectosacral fascia or the Waldeer's fascia now when you divide the Waldeer's fascia basically if you cut this Waldeer's fascia you will go into the deep rectal space and here you have to divide this Denon villus fascia so if you are dividing the rectum below the Waldeer's fascia if you are dividing the rectum below the Waldeer's fascia what is it known as this is known as low anterior resection are you getting so any resection i should take change the pen pen so any surgery involving involving resection resection of rectum rectum below Waldeer's fascia below Waldeer's fascia do you know when you cut the Waldeer's fascia you actually enter into the deep recto rectal space or deep rectal space <coughs> so that is what is known as low anterior resection are you getting so what is the concept of low anterior resection and and you can say the anterior resection if we do all the surgery above the Waldeer's fascia that is known as anterior resection if we go below it that is what is known as low anterior resection but try to understand since it's a cylindrical structure there are two margins which are very important the vertical margins and the you can say the cross sectional margin CRM cross sectional resection margin is also important why suppose if you take out a tumor if you take out a tumor and this is the tumor above you have divided up to the level of distal sigmoid colon and below you have divided it above the you can say dentate line wherever you have done suppose you have taken a healthy margin remember in anterior resection anterior resection we take a distal 5 centimeter margin accepted distal 5 centimeter margin is accepted but for the low anterior resection the distal margin the distal margin is not 5 centimeter because it's not possible to take out 5 centimeter otherwise you will not be able to preserve the sphincter function so it's 2 cm then there is something which is known as ULAR ultra low LAR so when you talk about ultra low anterior resection there are some patients who are desperate and requesting you doctor please try to save my anal canal route of defecation so in that case if you reduce and compromise this margin to 0.5 cm so what is ultra low LAR LAR with distal margin with distal margin and what is this distal margin students tumor free margin to be 0.5 centimeter that is what is known as ultra low AR so one is the distal margins and according to distal margins we are deciding AR LAR and ultra low AR if you cannot preserve that much margin also APR is the strategy but the next thing that we all have to understand is there is lot of perirectal fat yeah perirectal fat and you need to take out the rectum along with the mesorectum so one big challenge is okay vertical margins are accepted but what about this CRM what is CRM so this is <coughs> the proximal margin this is the distal margin but what about CRM this is the circumferential the circumferential resection margin the circumferential resection margin and the ideally accepted margin should be 1 to 2 centimeters so at least 1 to 2 centimeter away from the rectum you should be dividing it so that you include the 
meso rectum also very good so this is very important for you to understand the concept of crm now how can we understand that where do we resect so that we achieve an adequate crm this is very important so now we will start the concept of tme what is the concept of tme that is total meso rectal excision let us try to understand this concept of tme total total meso rectal meso rectal excision now when we are talking about the concept of total meso rectal excision how shall we work how shall we understand this bachche this is to help this is to help in achieving in achieving adequate crm adequate crm <coughs> hi lallu it's a life it's a life are you feeling like reported you can talk to me also huh? so to help in to help in achieving adequate adequate uh, horizontal margins now let us try to understand you want to write something you are always there free to write so let us try to understand bachche let us have a top view so abhi main jo aapko dikhane ja raha hu wo hai top view of the rectum so top view top view of pelvis at the level of rectum so let us try to have our eyes in a top view okay dekho bachcho okay so here you have the rectum i hope you can understand that this is a top view so you will be seeing the cross section of the rectum yeah then here you will be having the sacrum and then here you will be having the presacral plexus presacral plexus so i can draw it like this so presacral plexus so we have rectum presacral plexus then again around the rectum around the rectum we shall be having a lot of what mesorectal fat mesorectal fat are you seeing this mesorectal fat this is what is mesorectal fat This is very, 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 very important. Very important. <coughs> Now, try to understand this. This is simple. So, this is meso rectum. I'm just going to decrease the size of my cursor. So, this is meso rectum that you are seeing in front of you. Now, this is the presacral plexus, presacral plexus, and in between this meso rectum and presacral plexus, we shall find the standard. you can say fascias what is this fascia students this is presacral fascia this is presacral fascia i hope you can understand the top view yeah oh my pleasure to okay okay my pleasure to meet you lalu also bachche dekho let us try to understand let us try to understand this is presacral fascia the next that we have is this is the endopelvic fascia condensing on the what side students posterior side so what is this fascia that we are talking about this is known as fascia propria rectum students try to understand that this is the toughest topic of you can say gi tract git so fascia propria of the rectum so we have fascia propria rectum and we have presacral fascia and on the anterior side that same fascia is known as what students on the anterior side that same fascia is known as tell me tell me tell me this is known as denon villers fascia denon villers fascia <coughs> so i hope by this time you have some idea about the things now try to understand laterally what do we have what do we have laterally can you tell me what is the structure laterally uh -huh. i'll be very happy if you tell me this is pelvis are you getting this is pelvis so here also this is pelvis now one student is saying seeing that denon villers fascia and fascia propria they will have to meet at one point and they do meet at that point and what is that they all fuse with the they all fuse at the anterolateral aspect so this is going to fuse with the anterolateral aspect now just see what is this happening bachche what is this if you see these are the condensations of the two fascias 
getting fused are you are you are you able to understand this is the point where the two fascias are getting fused what are the two fascias denon villus fascia and the fascia propria rectum and this is the place where actually you have in many cases middle rectal vein and artery <coughs> normally the middle rectal vein and artery is not present what is this structure known as don't take this class to be anatomy class but let me tell you in anatomy they have no interest in explaining you this why because wo karte nahi to wo dekhte nahi hum karte hain and then we repent on our errors and that is why we have to have this let me see sir ye ye exam ke rishte bhi ajeeb hote hain sab apne naseeb hote hain rehte hain jo nigahon se dur wahi question compulsory hai kya baat hai unhone mahol bana ke rakha hai mahol bana sham ho gayi hai aur mahol bhi ban chuka hai so what are these structures these are lateral stalks and when we talk about the lateral stalks in 30% cases in 30% cases they may contain they may contain middle rectal artery and middle rectal vein now the problem is why i am telling you because whenever you are doing this resection and you are at the level of the normally the fascias can be easily divided at a go but whenever you are taking care of this uh, lateral stalk you should do the harmonic settings to maybe one or two so that there is no bleeding or if you are using a bipolar cook the tissue well so that the bleeding doesn't start generally i'm talking about laparoscopic uh, lar and uh, ar where we actually get to see this so now one student is saying sir what is the view what what is the view that you want to show us i am showing you two more things what are these two structures tell me what are these two structures yeah tell me these are your hypogastric plexus these are your hypogastric plexus <coughs> now try to understand when you are doing any surgery you need to understand two principles first of all the surgery should be bloodless and that is why we need to go in a proper plane can you see i am going in a proper plane and the second thing is the collateral injury should not be there bachche since it's a tumor it is not like a normal caliber rectum it's a expanded and many a times what happens while doing the surgery while doing the surgery you might damage a hypogastric plexus injury to hypogastric plexus will cause you erectile dysfunction that's acceptable but there is also one very important thing that is urinary incontinence so hypogastric plexus the important thing is injury to this hypogastric plexus results in urinary incontinence and along with that erectile dysfunction are you getting so this is very important for you to understand the importance of <coughs> importance of identifying the proper facial planes and you where should you be you should be in a proper plane now when you talk about proper plane now just see suppose during your surgery you entered into the presacral fascia and damaged presacral plexus take my words you will keep on you can say taking uh, taking your uh, harmonic or a uh, bipolar against the bone and these presacral plexus are so notorious they will not stop bleeding they will continue to bleed and you will be so much involved in that that your complete surgery or surgical feet will be will will be distorted so this is very important for you to understand this so where should you be you should be dividing these fascias in middle remember the fascia propria should be intact and so is the denon villus fascia so that you don't leave the mesorectal fat remember injury to the fascia propria rectum or denon villus that means you might have left a residual tissue and that is where you say that crm is not achieved similarly damage to the presacral fascia or the hypogastric plexus is going to result in a lot of complications so one very important thing that you need to understand very 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 important thing that you need to understand is important what is holy plane of safety so what is holy plane of safety the structure you have to identify and you have to be in a plane where you don't damage any of the vital structures nor <coughs> you damage the fascias of the rectum and this is what is known as 
total mesorectal excision so whenever we say lar that also means that we have done a tme when we say apr then also it means that we have done a tme so kuch bhi karna hai apr karna hai lar ultra low area you have to do total mesorectal excision so total mesorectal excision helps you to attain crm and lar apr and you can say ultra low ar so there are all the techniques to identify the distal stump and plan the surgery accordingly how well we can achieve the distal margins so is this total mesorectal excision and lar apr something clear something is clear or no yes now let us try to understand two three very 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 important things where do we do and what surgery do we do let us see this let us see acha j i will explain you the steps acha you were asking me uh, do you have exam do you have exam <coughs> just after this just after this i will explain bachche sabhi ko aati hai books mein nahi sabko aati hai so whenever we have a patient of ca rectum so you need to see you need to see where the growth is where the growth is the growth can be in the proximal rectum the growth can be in the proximal rectum in the mid rectum in the distal rectum i'll explain don't worry don't worry jay i'll explain distal rectum so proximal rectum distal rectum and mid rectum if you talk about the proximal rectum the next thing is the surgery of choice the surgery of choice will be anterior resection and this is very important that what is the distal tumor free margin the distal tumor free margin in this case has to be what students has to be 5 cm now for the growths in the middle rectum the surgery that we do is lar when you talk about lar the distal free margin the distal free margin is 2 cm and when we talk about distal rectum we go for lar we may go for ultra low ar yes what is the difference the distal margin the distal margin is 2 cm here the distal margin is 0.5 cm and if it cannot be preserved when it cannot be preserved you can go for apr what is apr apr is abdominal perineal resection when you talk about abdominal perineal resection this is a sphincter sacrificing surgery sphincter sacrificing surgery so when we talk about sphincter sacrificing surgery you all have to understand what is the context of sphincter sacrificing surgery so bachcho suppose the how how the surgery is done try to understand this is how the things are yeah this is how the things are yeah so you must understand that there is something which is known as pelvic diaphragm so this is what is known as pelvic diaphragm this is pelvic diaphragm yeah and what is pelvic diaphragm made up of levator and i so now how do you start your surgery the first phase of the surgery the phase 1 the phase 1 <coughs> you can do a laparoscopic or you can do an open procedure nowadays people are doing laparoscopic so you will do the mobilization of the colon so what is done this is mobilization mobilization of sigmoid colon sigmoid colon plus rectum up to pelvic floor up to pelvic floor so you are going up to pelvic floor the next is the next is along with this you are going to divide the rectum so here you are going uh, colon division of division of colon so division of the colon at the level where it is actually joining with the sigmoid colon the second phase of the surgery is done in the prone jack knife position so here the patient is supine and the approach is via abdomen via abdomen the phase 2 of the surgery the phase 2 of the surgery is via perineum and suppose this is the anal verge now what are you going to do in this case you are going to start the resection 
around the anus and you are going to continue you are going to continue from the side up to the pelvic bone so up to up to pelvic diaphragm so once you go up to the pelvic diaphragm the complete specimen gets mobilized the complete specimen get mobilized and when the complete specimen gets mobilized so you have divided it here you have divided it here now how you will remove the specimen yeah <coughs> you are going to remove the specimen via perineum the specimen is removed out via perineum and this is how you create the apr wound and now what you will do you will repair the pelvic floor you will repair the pelvic floor and also this was the anus so there is no utility of the anus and you will close it meanwhile what you are going to do so how will the fecal matter pass out yes you are going to mature end stoma and that is what is known as apr with end colostomy so this is what is apr with end colostomy i hope it is clear to all of you yeah is it clear or no is it clear so this was a brief review of the ca colon <coughs> ca rectum <coughs> sir can we use cockerization term here no bache cockerization nahi karoge since you are mobilizing the colon the left colon it is a metox on the right colon that's a cattle brush cockerization is not uh, hi rehit day big fan sir i have seen a lot of videos thank you for detailed approach videos love from kolkata i always love kolkata kolkata has always been an intrinsic part of my life and it is always going to be so uh, we have uh, one of my friend who is asking jay he has he was asking class also to explain the steps of cholecystectomy yes jay i will take 5 minutes to explain you the steps of cholecystectomy the steps of cholecystectomy so you want lap cholecystectomy i hope so the first task is the first is the first is how to create pneumoperitoneum so create pneumoperitoneum so when we talk about creating pneumoperitoneum the first <coughs> very important thing is there are two techniques the two techniques are one is via vires needle one is via vires needle and then is via the second is via mini laparotomy mini laparotomy so one is via vires needle and one is via mini laparotomy so what do you do in vires needle suppose this is the abdomen this is the abdomen you introduce the vires so vires is introduced here and how it is introduced it is introduced 90 degree to one wall of the abdomen and at 30 to 45 degree to the another wall pointing towards the anus pointing towards the anus what is the advantage of using the vires needle is that vires needle has the has 0.6% risk of injury 0.6% risk of injury and why it has 0.6 because of a bevel dent the moment it loses the resistance the moment it goes inside the bevel dent points out and yes it is not going to damage the structures the second advantage of vires like if you see all of my videos today i <coughs> i'm going to share the video very soon upload it very soon today i have done a gist of the endometrium so i'm i'm very feeling luck i'm feeling lucky because i was able to perform that and i did a gist gastrointestinal stromal tumor so of endometrium which is quite rare so today i have done it and i will be uploading the complete video skin to skin for you so the biggest advantage that if you see all of my videos i use the vires needle technique the advantage is slow pneumoperitoneum slow creation slow creation of pneumoperitoneum and whenever you talk about slow creation of pneumoperitoneum the advantage is there is no vagal so there is no vagal stimulation and if there is no vagal stimulation therefore there is no risk of bradycardia in comparison to the other ones when you do a mini laparotomy you will have to directly put a port so when you put a directly you put a port actually there is rapid rapid creation of a pneumoperitoneum so when we talk about rapid creation of pneumoperitoneum the sudden distension and stretching <coughs> and that is the time when the vagal hyperstimulation occurs and you should be knowing 
that during the surgery sinus bradycardia might occur so sinus bradycardia the answer for this sinus bradycardia hi vinod hi so the the reason for sinus bradycardia is sudden stretch of the pneumoperi of, of the abdominal cavity so once you have created the pneumoperitoneum the next is what is the gas that we use students there are a lot of gas in literature but yes you can use co2 you can use co2 co2 is preferred why co2 is preferred it is preferred because it is colorless not only colorless it is odorless and then not only this it is non combustible it is non combustible and the biggest thing is it is cheap so it is cheap so these are the advantages that you have with yeah 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 we know tell me what advice do you need so cheap <coughs> why we cannot use nitrous oxide nitrous oxide when you talk about nitrous oxide it is combustible so in case you want to do a diagnostic you can use nitrous oxide because nitrous oxide has an anesthetic effect also rarely you can use the room air also like nowadays auto or there are auto insufflators and the advantage of auto insufflator is suppose the gas goes off it can take the room air also but don't use oxygen because when you use oxygen there are a lot of troubles with that in rare cases you might use helium also helium is the best gas but it is still to be discovered uh, you discovered at the industrial scale and it's very costly it's very costly so that is the big trouble now the second thing is that uh, the second thing is that you know if you need a patient related advice मेरे पापा अच्छे हैं पर उन्हें गुस्सा बहुत आता है वो अपने गुस्से पे निकलते हैं तो मुझे बेल्ट से हर दो दिन मारते हैं बच्चे अब ये मैं क्या करूं विनोद ये तो हर बचपन की कहानी है अब आपका बचपन अभी तक ख़त्म नहीं हुआ है तो पापा से कहो कि भाई ना मारा करें और यही कहेंगे कि बच्चा बड़ा हो गया है और <coughs> मैं इसमें क्या करूँ बच्चे किसी दिन बेल्ट पकड़ के ही बोल देना कि मैं बड़ा हो गया हूँ पापा मत मारा करो देखो ताकत आ गई बेल्ट पकड़ लिए अगले दिन नहीं मारेंगे और क्या कर सकते हैं सो so, पापा को समझाना पड़ेगा पापा मारते नहीं है गंदी बात होती है और ऐसी बात नहीं है कि मार खाने की क्षमता नहीं है पर आपको मैं बेल्ट पकड़ लूँगा तो अच्छा नहीं रहेगा एनी वीज लिव लिव सो नाव हाउ डू यू इस्टेब्लिश सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज़ द टारगेट दिस इज़ द टारगेट एंड वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द टारगेट This is 10 mm port. अरे मुझे पता है मुझे पता है मुझे पता है तभी तो इस बुढ़ापे में भी मार खा रहा है बच्चा सो टेन एम एम दिस इज द कैमरा पोर्ट एंड वी प्रिफर वी प्रिफर इट एट द लेवल ऑफ अम्बलाइकस अम्बलाइकस द सेकेंड इज क्या एडवाइज है द सेकेंड इज वी गो फॉर टेन एम एम एपी गैस्ट्रिक पोर्ट सो बच्चे टेन एम एम एपी गैस्ट्रिक पोर्ट टेन एम एम अम्लाइकस एंड दिस इज द कैमरा और द टेलीस्कोप पोर्ट एंड देन फाइव एम एम राइट सब कॉस्टल राइट सब कॉस्टल पोर्ट एंड देन फाइव एम एम यू हैव राइट आई लेक फॉसा पोर्ट जनरली दीज आर द पोर्ट द राइट आई लेक फॉसा पोर्ट दिस इज द ट्रैक्शन पोर्ट ट्रैक्शन पोर्ट आर यू गेटिंग एंड देन दीज अपर टू सो फाइव एम एम एंड टेन एम एम 5 mm and 10 mm these are operational ports operational ports koi nahi bache vinod aapke sath galat ho raha hai aap ek kaam karo aap police mein thoda sa complaint complaint karo police police ko batao ki hamare papa maarte bahut hai belt belt se to ho sakta hai police bhi unke sath kuch baat kare samjhaye nahi to ngos ki help lo aur kya kar sakte hain bacche hum to itna hi kar sakte hain aapke papa ko thodi samjha sakte hain papa ko samajhna chahiye next is so these are the ports <coughs> the third is the dissection the third step is the dissection now when we talk about dissection there are two things that you need to dissect what is the first thing that you need to dissect is posterior window of safety what is the concept of posterior window of safety we need to go behind the gall bladder and separate it so this is what is known as separation of separation of cystic structures so separation of cystic structures away from away from liver bed now why this is very important i have seen a lot of people 
doing a Kellogg's dissection first. Yeah. So <coughs> try to understand this. When we go for direct approach to direct approach to Kellogg's, there could be a possibility that the posterior surface of the gallbladder is closely adhered with the right posterolateral duct or maybe the uh, hepatic artery and that is the time when you actually damage a hepatic structure. Remember once you do a posterior window of safety, no one can stop you from doing a, a, a good cholecystectomy. What is a posterior window of safety students? Suppose this is a gallbladder, this is uh, how the structures look like. Yeah. This is how the structures look like. So this is the hepatic uh, uh, cystic artery and, uh, and cystic duct. But see the first space that you should be creating is this space. Are you getting this is where the posterior window of safety is there. And then you do the second is dissection of calots. So actually what you think to be calots is not a calots, it's a hepatocystic triangle. So dissection of calots and when we talk about dissection of calots, what is a calots triangle? This is cystic artery, this is uh, cystic duct and this is how we have the common hepatic duct and this is the common bile duct. <coughs> this is what is the dissection of the Kellogg's triangle. This is where the Kellogg's triangle is and then you will go for the clipping. So clipping of the structures. Now for clipping you have two options. You can use the titanium clips, you can use the titanium clips or you can use the like or you can say uh, the hemolock. If you want to see what is hemolock, they are self locking, they are self locking clips, they are self locking clips. Yeah. Always remember Jay, the concept of Ruvius sulcus is that, uh, I did not want to tell in this, uh, let me tell you, when you talk about the Ruvius, Ruvius sulcus, you I'll just give you a call, just give me one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. So, let us talk about, when we talk about the Ruvius sulcus, the rule is, <coughs> stay always above the Ruvius sulcus. So, when you talk about Ruvius sulcus, if you go below the Ruvius sulcus, Actually, you are more close uh, to the collate docal structures and the chances of injury to bile duct is very, very, very high. So, but Ruvius sulcus is always not justified. I'll show it in my surgeries. So, clipping of cystic artery and cystic duct. And when you do this, now the fifth is separation of gallbladder, separation of gallbladder from the gallbladder fossa, from GB fossa. And the last is extraction, extraction of the specimen, extraction of specimen, specimen from the, from the, uh, you can say epigastric port is generally what is preferred. So I will just quickly show you one small <coughs> approach how to do a safe cholecystectomy. So I'll quickly take you to the channel. Just give me a second. Just give me a minute. I'll go to the channel and just take it. There is some problem with the there is some problem with this uh, internet. So what we can do? Uh, my iPad is not. You can go to my YouTube channel. You can see there are n numbers of videos on this. So you can just enjoy those videos. So till then, bye bye, and we'll meet. Very